such a huge inspiration to me is that uh, to digressing a little bit but answering your question sort of as to why their music has always felt very patriotic to me is that when a Bollywood singer or a Bollywood composer when they perform anywhere in the world whether it is New York or New Jersey or you know or Moscow or Berlin or wherever they always are able to fill up a complete stadium they are able to fill up a stadium they are able to fill up a complete arena or a hall or whatever and they get a huge audience but that audience is mostly the Indian diaspora about 99% of that audience is the Indian diaspora because Bollywood even except with a few exceptions Bollywood is actually not broken cultural barriers but a few exceptions are there where Bollywood has actually broken cultural barriers but when you look at the classical musicians like Pandit Ravi Shankar, Pandit Vishwamohan Bhatt, Ustad Ali Akbar Khan, Ustad Zakir Hussain, uh, Anushka Shankar, all of these musicians. In fact, when I was 19 years old, I had gone to San Francisco and I watched a concert of Pandit Ravi Shankar. And what shocked me of that concert is that there must have been about 1,500 people in the audience. And the audience inside the auditorium was very reflective of uh, the demographic of the city itself. Because inside the audience, about 80% of the people were people who were natives of uh, San Francisco. And uh, the rest of them were, you know, were, uh, uh, were people from India, people from China, people from Latin America and things like that. And then that is when I realized that it's these traditional musicians who have actually broken cultural barriers. And the best part is that they're not trying to ape the West. What they're doing, and they're not trying to follow current trends. They're just playing what is true to their own heart and true to their own culture. And they're digging deep into themselves and figuring out what is it that makes them uniquely Indian. And they're showcasing that to the world. So for me, any music of uh, any of these amazing classical musicians has always been an inspiration for me. Not only the music, but them as a personality too. One more question. Sure. As uh, amazing as this feat is, like uh, going to Abbey Road, yeah. uh, the world's biggest uh, studio, and uh, performing the national anthem with a full British orchestra. Do you think so? It would ever be possible for a British show and American to come to India to one of our studios and perform the national and their national anthem with an all Indian orchestra and uh, put the Indian public say be as as accepting of it as the British shows have been. That's already happened in the past. I've uh, created a, a sort of like slightly Indian version of the Canadian National Anthem when I had performed over there and I created that. But anyway, so, but that was not at this particular magnitude. But at the same time, I believe that uh, the thought process can be slightly different because a symphony orchestra is a Western concept. So what needs to happen is that them coming over here and probably recording a National Anthem with Indian instrumentation. And I'm pretty sure that that is going to happen because that is the way forward. Because everybody is looking for diversity, everybody is looking for different ways of representing the national anthem. That is one thing. Second thing is that, uh, I believe, this is my personal opinion, so don't hold me to it, but no other country has got a national anthem like India where it is revered across the country, where they take it that seriously. They'll probably have another song, like a pop song or something like that, that all of them love, that they will record in an Indian way, which has happened, like the James Bond theme, and, uh, you know, and uh, the theme for Mission Impossible, and the theme for Titanic. These are songs that they will record, but the thing is that they do not revere the national anthem in their country the way that we revere a national anthem. So I, so I believe that maybe that might not happen simply because they will not care about their national anthem to actually record it in another country, but they'll care about their other stuff. And that has happened time and again, where their very, very popular songs have been uh, done with Indian orchestras and Indian ensembles and all of that stuff. But I don't think they care about the national anthem as much as we do. Namaskar, Vicky. This is Ashish from Danny Master. Yeah. Ah, there you are. Thank you. On a lighter note, I have a Royal Philharmonic Orchestra has 100 units. units. <laughs> the thing is that uh, I joked with them. So that video I have not yet edited it, but I'll send it to everybody. Before we started doing the national anthem, performing it, I actually spoke to them. And I told them, you know, during the time I told them that, you know, this will be the biggest symphony orchestra to record the national anthem. And I'm very honored to, uh, to work with you yet again after working with you in the past. So what's up, Kenebola? And then I said that I laughed and I told them that and after ruling us for after you people ruled us for 200 years, this will be the best gift you can give to India. Mm -hmm. Of course, everybody laughed, and, but not laughed at me, but you know, they all laughed in acknowledgement, you know. And that made them work very, very hard to give me the best product. 
because they felt it, you know, that this is a gift that we have to give to Indians. And I felt it in their performance because I do not believe, I've worked with them so many times in the past and I do not believe that uh, this kind of effort and this kind of quality I've ever gotten in the past because they really worked hard and they wanted to give this to 1.4 billion Indians. And you have every project, this project is also a good project. You have to stand on the wrong side. But the special thing is that when you were starting, you said that some people you probably don't know. You also need to say that you have 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 to say that the Hindi film industry is a little bit of a problem. That you have to say 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 that. So I think that the Hindi industry should also think about this. That the person who I'm saying, who is the leader of the world, take it here and work with them so that the work that is here, 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 the work that is here. So, I believe that the music that is made right now in the Hindi film industry is extremely high quality. I believe that the production quality, the singers, the music, the beats, the production, the mixing, mastering, it's parallel with everything. So, I do not believe that there is a dearth of quality. I think quality is absolutely stunning. And even I listen to Bollywood music all the time. The only thing is that I would love to be a part of a Bollywood film if the film at the core of it is about a very strong social message. Because then I would resonate with it and then I would be able to, you know, uh, I would be able to give my best to the movie because it would be something that I absolutely believe in. So that is very important uh, for me. Uh, because uh, for me, what does not excite me is somebody paying me money and asking me to make music, you know, based on their sensibility. For me, what I, excites me more is that I have this idea that, you know, that I want to get this national anthem done by the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra and I go with all my might and I do this, you know. Or there is a social cause, like for example, a refugee crisis or there is a so, there is an environmental cause, just say a human and elephant conflict and uspar mein music banao. So for me, these are the things that excite me a lot, you know, doing things which I feel very strongly about. Indian cinema, if you collaborate with any maker, who will you be with? Or who will you be with any actor who will you be with? It's very difficult for me to say because there are lots of them. Musicians, I can tell you a lot. I've collaborated with Mr. Shankar Mahadevan many times. Salim Suleiman Ji, they are almost like brothers to me. We've collaborated many times. So there are lots of musicians like that. Aditya Narayan, Jonita Gandhi, I've collaborated with all of them with all of them. But filmmakers, it's difficult. It's difficult for me to say. There are lots of them actually. Because if I, there are one or two names come to my mind, but I don't want to say those names because I will be leaving out many other names. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ricky, for how long you have been uh, 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 planning? Oh, yeah. Ah, yeah. So, for how long you have been uh, planning to uh, shoot this and record the entire national anthem? And my second question is, how are you trying to uh, uh, get this to the root level in India? You know, where social media doesn't exist. So, for those people or over there, in connection with the government of India, maybe for that matter, or for social causes, how are you planning to take it? So, the planning of this has been about, uh, it's not been very long, it's been about three months. Uh, so three months back is when I got the idea that we should be doing this and I should be doing this and that is when I approached the orchestra and you know and came up with the score because it's very difficult to come up with that score because every musician needs a sheet in front of them you know of what to play so to write that score and to come up with it where everything comes together beautifully because until the orchestra plays it you do not know how it's going to sound you know with all these musicians together so that uh, so that uh, took a while for me to actually write it and to understand that this is going to sound good and then the experience of hearing the orchestra playing it to you is, is an experience which is unparalleled because you're in that room and the orchestra is playing your like you know people are feeling feeling pride about our, our own inherent culture people are feeling pride about being uh, Indian and that's happening all over the world it's not just with us it's also happening with the Indian diaspora because I go everywhere my music is predominantly Indian and I see that I'm able to perform my music anywhere in the world you know to audiences everywhere like for example, I recently performed at the World Health Organization, the WHO headquarters in Geneva. There was not a single Indian person in the audience. It was just, you know, people from all over the world, mainly Europe and America and Australia and Africa, all these countries. And our entire set from beginning to end was in Indian languages. And it was Indian music. And even that was very, very appreciated. So the thing is that I think people all over the world are appreciating uh, Indian art. And uh, because I can only speak about art right now. But in, uh, they're appreciating Indian art and at the same time, Indian artists are feeling proud to be Indian artists. So that is happening right now because, uh, uh, like, where's that sound coming in? There's a mic I think that is on. Anyway, 
so so that is uh, so that is happening yeah. and you know and i perform with a lot of indian musicians and i travel with them all over the world like uh, mera ek khatam player hai tabla player hai sitar player hai flute player hai jo mere sath pure uh, i mean that we travel around the world doing concerts and these musicians have become so busy in the last 2 to 3 years because they're not just performing with me they're performing with other international artists everywhere in the world some with jazz musicians with pop musicians with other musicians all over the world so that is happening you know this pride of being indian that is happening it's just that we have to accelerate it wo thoda jaldi karna padega because it's happening slowly it's moving in the right direction but we have to accelerate it and lastly what's next for your side and brothers which you consider have earning a push aage hai Yeah, of course. So I've got another album that is releasing on the 18th of August, uh, an album called Police Beyond Borders. Uh, so that uh, I mean that it's basically uh, there is a band, uh, the, the Police, which is uh, one of the greatest bands in in the history of rock and roll music. So unka a drummer and the founder of the band, Stuart Copeland. Uh, I collaborated with him on my previous album, Divine Tides, which won two Grammy awards. Now this is this album is another collaboration with him. So that album, again with a lot of Indian music, a lot of Indian languages, and uh, this album will be releasing on the eighteenth uh, of August. Hi, Mister. Welcome to our podcast. No, I am here today. I am here today. Welcome to Mumbai. Today, we are going to talk about the Grammy Awards. The first Indian who won the Grammy Award. Yeah. पहले रवि मैं मैं दूसरा इंडियन हूं पंडित रवि शंकर ने भी तीन जीता है लेकिन मैं ग्रैमी लाके गया था नहीं उनको भी तीन ग्रैमी अवार्ड्स मिले हैं लेकिन मैं फर्स्ट इंडियन तो वही थे वही है वही है 100% जी तो हर एक नेशनल एंथम सभी इंडियंस के लिए कुल दोनों होता है करेक्ट और जिस तरह के साथ में ये अभी नेशनल एंथम बनाया है उससे किससे लग रहा है कि 14 तारीख को जब रिलीज होगा तो पूरा इंडिया साथ-साथ ब्रिटेन में अदर देश में देखा जाएगा तो आपको क्या लगता है कितने लोग तक ये चीज पहुंचेगी इट्स वेरी बहुत मुश्किल है बोलने के लिए कि कितना रीच होगा बिकॉज अगेन यू नो हमारा कोई मीडिया प्लान नहीं है हमारा कोई सपोर्ट नहीं है कोई बड़ा लेबल के साथ और यू नो टेलीविजन के साथ कोई टाइप नहीं है कुछ भी नहीं है तो इट विल ऑल डिपेंड अपॉन यू द मीडिया इज टू वॉट द रीच विल बी सो जैसे मुझे आपका जितना भी हेल्प मिल सके मुझे चाहिए सब जगह पब्लिश होगा सब जगह जिसको भी पब्लिश करना हो वो पब्लिश कर सकते हैं